Chapter 19, Part 2, and we're going to cover shared base compensation stock options. Now, stock option plans. Stock option plans give employees the option to purchase a specified number of shares of the firm's stock at a specified exercise price. During a specified period of time, historically, options were valued at their intrinsic values, market price of the shares, minus option price at which they can be acquired. Compensation now is measured as the fair value of the stock options at the grant date. And somebody does some estimation to come up with this. We record that amount as compensation expense over the service period for which employees receive the options. The fair value is estimated by employing a recognized option pricing model. So let's take a look at an example. On January 1st of 2020, Mike Corporation granted $36 million incentive stock options to a group of managers, permitting each to purchase the company's $1 par value stock within the next six years, but not before January 1st, 2023. The vesting price is the fair value at the date of the grant of $8. The fair value of the option is $1. Forfeitures are estimated, and they are not estimating any forfeitures. Now, what's the total estimated compensation cost? It would be 36,000 shares times a dollar, which is the fair value of the option, equals $36 million. What is the entries over the vesting period? Now, no entry is made when it starts because the liability accrues over time. So for the end of 2020, it would be 12 million. And for 2021, it would also be 12 million. And for the third year, it would be 12 million. Now, what happens when they actually exercise? The options. Well, if 75% of the stock options are 36 million times or 27 million are exercised on March 30th of 2023 when the market price is $9. First of all, remember you have to, you don't use the $9, you use what the fair market value was when they were awarded the options. So we're going to use $8 times 27 million. And that's how much cash they're going to get. And then paid in capital stock options is going to be $27 million because that's how much we've accrued. And then common stock with a par of $1, so it happens to be the same, is going to be $27. And the difference is going to go to paid in capital in excess of par. Now, what happens if the remaining options that have vested expire without being exercised? Paid in capital stock options would be $9 million, and paid in capital expired options would be $9 million. Now what if, if we have stock options and we have forfeiture? Same problem, but Forfeitures are based on actual, and in 2021, actual forfeitures were 10% due to turnover. So we still have our estimated compensation, and we would have made the same entry at the end of the first year, because it wasn't until the second year that we had forfeitures. So we do the same thing. We say, okay, the original stock options had a value of $36 million. We had 10% forfeit, so that means the total value is 32400000 We divide by 3, which tells us the annual amount should have been 10800 instead of twelve. We take that times 2. We subtract what we've already booked, which means we, the adjustment for 2021 is going to be $9.6 Now, what about the next year? That's going to be our... 10,800,000. So when we add them all up, we have allocated a total of 
Now, what if the options that are remaining are exercised? We're going to figure out the balance, which we know is 32,400,000 or 32,400,000 options. Our journal entry is going to be $8. The cash that we're going to pay out is $8 times 32,400,000 because we have to use the fair value at the grant date. Paid in capital stock options is going to be our 32,400,000. Common stock is going to be times a dollar par and paid in capital will be 259,400,000. ,400 so that's how we would do part two or stock options. Now we'll proceed to part three.